Hi, thanks for joining us. My name is Ryan. I'm Michelle. And today we're going to be talking about the NSC LPR 832-BT1. It's a license plate recognition camera, and here's Michelle to tell you a little bit more about the specs. It's a 2 megapixel EXIR bullet camera. It has a 8 to 32 millimeter lens, can record up to 60 frames per second, and has a 100 foot IR distance. I'll show you what's included in the box. Uh, first, we have the weatherproof cable connector. That's done on weatherproof your Cat5 connection. Um, also, it comes with instructions and software. And of course, here you have the uh, wall anchors and mounting screws, the drill template, and the junction box, which attaches to the back of the camera here. And essentially, that's what all your cables are going to go inside. Next, we're going to explain the various aspects of how the camera works, as well as how they work with an NVR and attached monitor the micro SD card, and the IVMS 4200 software. But first, let's talk about the height requirements and viewing distances that are required for capturing license plates. The optimal height is between two meters and six meters, which is about six and 18 feet. Also, you wanna make sure that the angle is no more than 30 degrees from the plate itself to the ground. One of the most important parts of capturing plates effectively is the field of view. Ideally, you want the camera zoomed in as much as possible to eliminate any false readings. So as you can see, planning on where you're installing it and adjusting the zoom level is a very important piece of the puzzle before you even get started. To illustrate the viewing distance capabilities, I'd like to switch it over to Nichelle. While you're watching this, be sure to note the silky smooth 60 frames per second. I'm going to show you the live view of the license plate camera that we currently have connected in the back lot of Nelly's security. I'm going to show you the camera zoomed all the way out, zoomed all the way in, and the location and feet that we've had success with capturing license plates. Currently the camera is zoomed all the way out and where the cursor is moving at that yellow line, we've had success for a capturing license plate that is about 50 feet away from the camera. We're going to be zooming the camera all the way in. You're looking at about a little over 100 feet away, and we've had successful capturings as well from that location from the camera. Here are a few examples of the camera's capture zoomed out and zoomed in. So as you can see, the camera has excellent quality and can capture license plate up to about 100 feet. Whenever you combine the camera with our recorders, you can search for specific plate numbers. Now here's Michelle to show you a little bit more on the HDMI interface and on the IVMS 4200 software. First, I'm going to show you how to do a license plate search on the attached monitor through an NVR. In the license plate search tab, you can see that we have captured license plates from vehicles. If we click on one, you will get a picture of the vehicle and the license plate that it has captured. You will also see the plate number that it has captured as well from that vehicle. If you press play, it will do a playback of the vehicle passing. As you can tell, it has also captured some false license plates. And if we click on one, you will see a picture of the vehicle that it has captured. And you can also do the playback from here. If you do the playback, you can see that it has captured the license plate in the playback, and you may be able to look at the license plate from that playback. Here I'm going to show you how to do a license plate retrieval off of IVMS 4200. You're going to click on the license plate retrieval in the software, and then on the left-hand side you'll see your NVR that you have the license plate retrieval camera added to. Select your camera and then move towards the bottom after selecting and change the dates of the desired time you'd like to search for your license plates. Once you've selected your time and date, it'll search and it will bring up everything from that desired time that you have selected. As you can tell, we've collected a lot of license plates and we've even collected false license plates. As you can see from this first shot, you'll see that it has collected the world side of the UPS truck and again an 800 sign on the truck again. Now we're going to show you an actual license plate retrieval. The top right it will show you a still picture of the license plate of the vehicle that I have captured. In the bottom right, you'll see the vehicle cross the line and capture a license plate. 
we'll show you again with another delivery truck. Again, the top right, you'll see your license plate there and a sill picture. Bottom right, it'll show the truck reversing where it will cross the line, take a picture, and capture the license plate. Now I will show you how to do a license plate search on IVMS 4200. As you can see here in the top right, we have a vehicle pulled up on where it captured the license plate. It says GTB923. We're going to go over to the left, type that in, and you do not need the dash between the letters and numbers. Change the start time to the desired time you would like to search from. Change the end time as well. Click search and it will search all of the license plate retrievals between those dates. And it will even tell you on that bar on the bottom, it will tell you the license plate number GTB923. Another neat feature with the license plate recognition camera is it has a slot for a micro SD card. It's going to be on the bottom of the camera under a plate. Um, you also have a reset button here. And what the micro SD card is used for is you can either use it for backup purposes, for example if you have an NVR and for some reason that it fails, you'll have backup stored directly on the camera itself. Uh, if you don't have an NVR, you can also use the camera standalone to capture license plates on the card here. And we're going to install it in the camera. It pretty much just slides in right here. And you just press it in until it clicks and it's all done. And now Nichelle is going to show you a little bit more about the micro SD card. If you have installed an SD card into your camera, you can do a search and retrieval directly from the camera through the SD card. If you go into picture, on the left hand side change the file type to vehicle detection. You can insert a plate number if you have a certain plate number that you're looking for. Change the start time to your desired time, end time as well. Click search and a list of files will show up of pictures that have been taken of license plates. What's really great about this is at the end of the file name it will actually give you the license plate number that it has found. I'm also going to show you just to click on that left hand box, click download, and it will download that picture straight to your PC to where you can view it. Now that you've seen how you can review video with a camera in IVMS 4200, let's go install it and watch it in action. Uh, so today we're going to be removing the PTZ you can see up here and we're going to be installing the license plate recognition camera. Um, with the LPR we're going to focus down our parking lot here to a specific choke point. That way we can get every license plate that exits that way. From a few of our example videos earlier, you may have noticed that if the camera's not focused on a specific choke point, you'll get false readings. So what we've done is mounted the camera outside of our store, focusing on a specific area where the cars exit. And by doing this, we were able to capture the majority of license plates that came through. Let's check it out. So you can see as they load, it captured the majority of cars that drove through our parking lot. Um, on the previews, as you can see, it cuts off the last number sometimes but that's okay. If you need the full plate numbers, you simply just have to click on the preview and you'll see it listed right here. You can also click play to play the preview back of when it actually captured the plate itself. Hey guys, my name is
name is Sean Nelson, and Ryan and Michelle asked me to do this next part here. Um, what we're going to do tonight is demonstrate the infrared capabilities on this camera. Um, this is out here at my house. I live out in the boonies. It's really dark out here. Also got a really long driveway, so this is great testing ground for this camera. Um, we still got to wait about 20 or 30 minutes before it gets really dark, but once it does, I'm going to bring you back out here and start filming. It's definitely dark enough outside to do the video shoot, um, but before I even got started, I noticed something. So the truck is only about 10 to 15 feet away from the security camera right now, but I cannot read the license plate. Um, the license plate is too overexposed, I believe, by the very powerful infrared the security camera has. So what I'm thinking is... I think there's some settings in there that I can adjust to make that license plate pop. So I'm going to go ahead and look into the settings and get back with you here. All right, so here we are with the default image settings of the camera. I knew this couldn't be right, so I did some digging. And in the web interface, there's this setting called mounting scenario. You need to switch it to road if you plan on using this camera as a license plate camera, which everyone will. But once I did that, it really affected the image there. As you can see, it really makes that license plate kind of stand out. Still overexposed though at this 15 foot distance, that really powerful infrared's overexposing it. So I found a way you can actually um, change the infrared power. I, I lowered the high beam distance all the way down to the bottom. Once I did that here at this 15 foot distance, as you can see, it's gonna make those license plate numbers really pop once I lower that infrared power. By the way, I have this lens zoomed all the way out at this 15 foot distance. Here we are at 50 foot. Um, went ahead and changed the infrared settings back to auto again. I didn't like it, still a little overexposed. So here I am changing that high beam down back to low again. Once I did that, you know, boom, it made that license plate pop again. Even at 50 foot, I had to um, kind of decrease that infrared power. Um, and I'm here I am jumping in the truck. I kind of wanted to see what tail lights would do if they would blind out the camera. Good news is it doesn't affect the license plate quality at all. You can see there it still looks good. Um, I even turned on my reverse lights there and still nothing. You know, you can still easily read that license plate, no problem at all. Um, by the way, I have the lens zoomed in somewhere midway, not zoomed out all the way, not zoomed in all the way, just kind of zoomed in midway. All right, so here we are at 100 feet. Um, I did change the infrared mode back to auto because the low settings were too low for 100 feet. So uh, once I did that, it illuminated that license plate a lot better. There you can easily read that license plate. Um, so this just goes to show you, you know, you might have to adjust some settings depending on which distance you're at. Um, but anyways, I'm, you know, again, I'm jumping here in the truck, looking at the uh, how tail lights will affect the image. Um, by the way, I also have the lens zoomed in all the way at the farthest distance. Um, so, you know, reads a real good license plate 100 feet. Matter of fact, I think it could probably even read license plates at even further distances. Okay. Alrighty, uh, just got done filming the 15 foot, the 50 foot, and the 100 foot shots. Um, and one thing I found out is it's a lot more difficult to capture license plates at night than it is during the day. Um, but I think one thing you will find that will really increase your chances of success is really determine a focus point of where that license plate's gonna pass by, basically a choke point. Um, and what I mean by that is you can't expect to have a camera you know, zoomed way out and capture license plates at 25 feet and have that same license plate with the same exact settings capture license plates also at 75 feet. So you really need to determine what distance you want that plate to be. Find a choke point, position your camera, and you know position your settings accordingly. When, once you do that, you're gonna increase your chances of success dramatically. Um, so, be sure to do that, and I'm going to switch it over to Ryan and Michelle for the next segment. 
To give you a quick recap, the camera can save plates to the micro SD card and NVR. Then you can review them on both devices as well as the software. Also remember that the optimal mounting height is between two and six meters. And focusing on a specific choke point is crucial for successfully capturing license plates. Well, we hope you liked the video. Um, if you have any questions about your license plate recognition needs, just give us a call or shoot us an email. We'll be happy to help you. Um, but thanks for watching.